These four peak performance habits not only blew up my business, but it also helped my clients go from low energy, low focus, and finding business hard to operating at their peak, finding business easy, and blowing up their income. So in this video, I'm going to share it all. I'll show you the four habits that will skyrocket both your performance and business, when to do them each day, and the easiest way to build them. So to start, let me show you habit one. And this will make sure that you're actually able to focus on your most important tasks and do them to the best of your abilities. But for it to make sense, I want you to imagine that your brain is like your phone. In the morning, it's fully charged, but as that battery gets drained, it becomes less efficient, less powerful and less useful. So at the start of the day, it's ready to power all your important tasks and do everything to an amazing standard. But what if you did something every morning that drained your battery for a few hours? Well then, if you tried to do the important tasks for your business, everything becomes slower, less efficient and well, worse. You'd find it harder to focus on those tasks, you'd become more distractible and the quality at which you do it would be lower because your energy is lower. Funnily, this is exactly what happens if you train hard and work out first thing in the morning. Now, let me explain because this might just change the game for you. You see, when you train, at least if you if you train properly and you train hard, there's going to be a one or two hour period after your workout where you're feeling sort of fucked. Look, anybody who trains properly on leg day will get what I'm saying, okay? I used to compete in Olympic weightlifting at a decently high level. I won British weightlifting championships, all the rest. So I was training legs hard four, five, and even six times a week. After every session, I was screwed for about one to two hours. And if I tried to work during that time, I either procrastinated or the work was done at a terrible quality, which of course meant my business just didn't grow. Those one to two hours after the gym, if you're training hard, are almost wasted. So what you want to do is actually build first and sweat later. Maybe you get up at 6am and work till 10am doing your most important tasks when your battery is full and you're operating at your cognitive peak and then you go to the gym when it's early in the day around 10am and then do the rest of your workday after the gym or you know you just work till 4pm finishing your workday and then go to the gym. Now I know some people love to work out in the morning, trust me I do too but for me I actually prefer the level of focus and mental energy I have when I work first. So if you find that you struggle to focus on your important tasks after the gym or that your mental energy just isn't there and growing your business is a priority for you, try doing your one to three most important tasks before working out, build first and sweat later. And that brings us to habit two, which is going to stop you from guessing when you make changes and allow you to make changes to things like when you train in a way that actually generates progress and creates measurable results. So imagine you were going on a road trip across the country, okay? You've been looking forward to it for months and it was finally here. Of course, you've planned out your final destination, all the stops you want to make and everything else that's needed to make sure the whole trip goes smoothly. So you pack the car, you get in, you start driving, but only instead of following a map to get to each stop point or to even get to the end of the trip, you just drove in whatever direction you felt like driving. How well do you think your trip's going to go? You can guarantee that you don't get to where you planned. So why do you do the same when it comes to your performance and your business? Why do you just blindly make decisions? Look, here's an uncomfortable truth, okay? A large part of human nature is about survival. And so we have feelings that try to protect us and guide us, but more often than not, these feelings are wrong. Think about that noise you hear in your house when you're home alone. All of a sudden the hairs stand up in the back of your neck and you become alert. You're on edge, you're nervous, you're scared. But yet it was just a random noise from the creaking of the house and it's nothing to worry about. It's entirely justified that we have these feelings and these emotions and although they may be wrong 90% of the time, when they're right they can save your life. But when it comes to your performance and your business, you can't just blindly make decisions based on what feels right because your feelings, your emotions, they lie. So what's the solution then? Well, it's to make decisions based on data because numbers and data don't lie. So here's what you need to do. You need to track data in two areas. The first is your business. So track all your funnel metrics, click through rates, page views, conversion rates, show up rates, and everything else you need to track in your business. This way you can see what part of your business is below a certain KPI and improve that area. So you know, if your sales are low and you want to make more sales, instead of thinking maybe you need a whole new sales page or sales funnel, maybe you see that your call show up rate is low. And so you can do things that improve your call show up rate. Essentially, when you track data, you're able to actually identify the real problem and fix it rather than just, you know, stabbing in the dark. The second area is your performance. Listen, 
Your business is simply a reflection of you. If you take bad actions and you make wrong decisions, your business will fall apart or at least stagnate or not grow how you think it should be growing. So your performance is fucking everything, okay? If you're low energy and you can't focus, you'll end up getting no work done. So how can you expect your business to grow? If you have limiting beliefs that hold you back from making certain decisions or trying certain strategies because, oh, that doesn't work or, oh, that's not me, then how can you expect to grow your business? Look, you won't gain an advantage in business by finding some new marketing strategy, writing some new copy or running a new ad, okay, because every single other business owner is doing them. But you will gain an advantage by optimizing for peak performance and shifting your identity to become that version of you that is capable of achieving your goals. So track this stuff. Track your sleep, your energy, your focus, your effectiveness, your behavioral habits, and your mindset. This way you can see data on how, for example, training at a certain time impacts your focus and your energy and in turn in your business and make changes to the time you train and see how that changes the results you get. In essence, you should never blindly change things, whether that's in your business or in your performance. Decisions should not be made blindly. Use data, make accurate, measurable changes that will push you in the right direction. Don't just make a change without knowing why that changed and don't just make a change without measuring the impact of that change because otherwise you'll never know the true impact of the change and you're quite literally just guessing okay data doesn't lie and your feelings do and this is something i've noticed in all the elite entrepreneurs that i work with those who are whose business is operating really well they all track data okay track data every elite entrepreneur tracks fucking everything whereas the amateur entrepreneurs the entrepreneurs who are not where they want to be or who are still sort of stuck at you know below 10k a month they're just not tracking data they don't they're guessing when they make decisions so track data in both your performance and your business and that brings us to habit number three perfectly which has been an absolute game changer for my clients so if you struggle with brain fog mental clarity or even if you just want a boost in productivity this will absolutely change everything for you so let me show you it okay you see, I used to wake up, spend about 45 minutes doing a morning routine and then get to work. But whenever I sat down to work, I would crash. I couldn't think clearly and no matter what I tried, I just could not focus. And here's the problem, right? There is a concept called daily momentum. Momentum is essentially the ability of something to keep going in the direction it's going. And with daily momentum, the idea is that how you start your day is how you will spend your day. So if you start your day with low focus, low clarity and feeling useless, you will continue your day that way. Which then when you consider longer term momentum, that means tomorrow you're much more likely to repeat the same scenario. And look, it wasn't the morning routine that was ruining my productivity. No, it was a specific part of my morning routine, a part that is so fundamental to our human biology that it almost seems crazy to think about until you try it. And I'm going to tell you what it is right now, but first you need to understand something called reactive hypoglycemia. Yes, I know, but don't worry, it will make sense and it's crucial for this to actually work and for you to appreciate how much impact it will have so that you can actually try it and, you know, change your performance. So imagine you have a constant background level of insulin in your blood. Now, one of the things insulin does is it allows your body to absorb glucose into the cells, which can then be used for energy. But when you do this one thing, your body can release a massive amount of insulin, which causes a massive spike. And of course, with more insulin, more glucose gets absorbed. So you have more energy, which sounds great, right? But when your body has glucose readily available, it uses it as its primary fuel source. And so this energy doesn't last very long. What happens next is that when after your insulin spikes, it falls. The glucose that was absorbed gets used up and because of the fall in insulin, your cells don't readily pick up more glucose and you crash. You become tired. You can't focus. You get brain fog. And as a result, you struggle to get anything done. You build negative daily momentum and your day is screwed. And this happens every single morning if you eat a massive breakfast. Now, it specifically happens if you eat a ton of carbohydrates, but Think about breakfast foods. The majority of breakfast foods are breads and cereals, high carbs, high sugar foods that will cause this reactive hypoglycemic reaction. And other than that, they're, they're just a pile of shit with seed oils and all, but that's a conversation for another day. But what is the solution here? Well, you could eat a high protein breakfast and have zero carbs, so you don't get this big spike and crash. But the issue here is that the firmic effect of protein is 20 to 30%, whereas with carbohydrates, it's five to 15 and with fat it's zero to three percent 
What this essentially means is that your body uses more energy to digest protein. And so that means your body is going to be redirecting blood and energy to the gut to digest your breakfast if you have a high protein breakfast and also high carb breakfast. But and hence you have less energy for the cognitive work you're doing and you'll still likely struggle to focus. Although if you have a high protein breakfast, it's nowhere near to the level as if you ate a high carb breakfast because you don't get the big peak and crash your energy is just basically being redistributed to your gut. Instead, what you should do is something called intermittent fasting. Now with intermittent fasting, there's, you know, a ton of different fasting ratios you can use, but the simplest one to use is 16 to 8. Now, what this basically means is you don't eat after 8 p.m. at night and you don't eat until 12 p.m. the next day. Basically, you have an early dinner and you don't eat breakfast. OK, super simple, super easy to do. This way, when you wake up and you're doing your important work in the morning, your body isn't trying to deal with food and you're not going to be crashing so you can be fully locked in on your work, fully focused with full clarity and zero brain fog. And that leads perfectly into the fourth habit. This is something like nobody considers, but yet it's one of the most impactful things you can do for your performance. It actually it blows my mind how nobody talks about this. It, like it's wild when whenever I explain it, you'll understand and look. It's because everybody knows the importance of sleep for energy and focus and all the rest, right? Everyone knows how important sleep is. But when people consider sleep, they only ever consider duration, like how many hours of sleep do you get? And without considering this part of sleep, you can get eight hours of sleep, but still never feel as if you've got enough. So what's a habit? Well, I'll tell you what it is right now, but first you need to understand something about your circadian biology, which is essentially the rhythms of your body, which occur over a 24 hour cycle, which on a side note, I think it's absolutely wild that we have rhythms that govern our body and what happens in our body that occur over the same period of time that it takes for the earth to rotate on its axis. It's pretty wild. But anyway, a large or important part of your circadian rhythm and biology is the release of melatonin and the production of adenosine. These are two chemicals critical for going to sleep and having high quality sleep. Essentially, as these two chemicals increase their level in your system, you get tired and you fall asleep. Now, a large part of when their levels increase depends on your circadian rhythm, which can be adjusted or shifted depending on when you go to sleep. So, for example, if you go to sleep 30 minutes earlier for a week, you will shift your circadian rhythm by 30 minutes and your body essentially winds down for sleep 30 minutes earlier. But there's something pretty much everyone does that ruins this rhythm and in turn the production of these chemicals and their sleep quality. You see, if sometimes, you know, let's say Monday to Thursday, you go to sleep at 9 p.m. But then on a Friday night, you go to sleep at 11 p.m. And then on Saturday night, you go to sleep at 1 a.m. What happens is your circadian rhythm doesn't get to be in rhythm. A rhythm, if you think about it, is literally a consistent beat. It needs consistency. And if you aren't consistent with your sleep schedule, your circadian rhythm isn't in rhythm. Therefore, your melatonin and adenosine release is inconsistent. It's not at a consistent time and your temperature changes, which is another major part of sleep, aren't consistent. OK, if you don't go to sleep at a consistent time, so, you know, if every single day of the week you go to bed at a different time or if on the weekend you go to bed at a different time, you're messing about your circadian rhythm, making sure it's not in rhythm, which will disrupt your ability to get to sleep and the depth and quality of your sleep, which means you get shit quality sleep and likely an inconsistent duration of sleep. In turn, you wake up tired with low energy and an inability to focus. So you get nothing done. And so because you're feeling tired, you drown yourself in caffeine all day, ruining your sleep for that night, creating a negative downward spiral. Look, with my clients, we track a ton of performance data and most people actually get enough sleep. Most people are getting between seven and nine hours of sleep, but most people are inconsistent with their sleep timings, especially towards the weekend. And when we optimize it by making it consistent, it's actually it's, it's hilarious how we see every other data metric from effectiveness to morning energy, overall energy, focus and productivity increase and in turn their business performance improves. And so they make more damn money. Simple. And look, so habit four is easy. It is simple. You basically need to be like a child and go to sleep at roughly the same time every night and wake up at roughly the same time every morning. Obviously, you know, one or two nights a month is going to be fine. Typically, I would probably recommend to have a consistent sleep schedule 90 to 95 percent of the time. And then, you know, if you have an event or something one night, two nights, three nights a month, OK, you're likely going to be fine. But if you're going and ruining your sleep schedule three, two to three nights a week, you're screwing yourself over. OK, and look, it is one thing to have all these habits and to improve your performance. 
but if you want to do something with this extra performance potential so that it grows your business, watch this video here and I'll show you how you can do that.